Should Asians save money for the future or should they live life now? This video is all about Asian frugality. So if you're excited about this conversation, please hit that like button right now. Oh man, this article just went viral on Next Shark and Yahoo. It is about a Japanese lady who ate for a dollar and 50 cents every day, very, very frugal lifestyle for 37 years and was able to buy three properties. But this actually sparked a debate about how Asians should live. Did she deny herself a fun life? Should she have lived in the moment or did she do the right sensible Asian thing to do? Uh, today joining us to, for this discussion is get the Lambo now, Eric Pham. I mean, what, what should she have done, man? Was she right? Was she Yo. wrong? Did she have a bad life? Did she make a smart choice? What? All I know is like, I would not be able to do that. I need that Lambo now, not later. You heard? Right. You're trying <laughs> to live and get the dopamine now. But I mean, I've seen it on both ends, though. Like, on one end, like, I, I, I know a friend of mine that has a background that's super formally educated, and they are very frugal. On the other end, I got a buddy of mine that's super fast money, get it fast, spend it fast, and then just spend it all. And then, Yeah, I mean, see. even in my own life, I would say that my dad came from more one of those families where it's like, you know, you study really hard, mm -hmm. you get one good salary, maybe like, yeah, pretty much that's it. And then you just like maybe make some really sensible low risk investments. But then another side of my family, it was just like double down. Let's go big and go home. Yeah. Let's take the profits and dump it all into the next investment <laughs> and let's get rich, baby. And I see the pros and cons of both sides. Yeah. And uh, I think it's really important that people out there understand what type of family they come from. So in the comments down below, let us know what type of family you were. Or maybe even your parents are split, right? Yeah, maybe your parents have different types of thinking when it comes to money. But what is your type of thinking? What was each background? Because you have to know because ultimately, man, you, you got to know what you saw growing up, how you saw that money come in, if you saw the money come in, and how you saw it spent. Um, so we're going to get into some specifics here. But I guess, uh, Eric, you were telling us that uh, your mom is kind of frugal on a lot of things, and she's not frugal on certain other things. What's yeah. the thing she, behind she's this? She's picked her spots where she likes yeah, to spend. I, yeah. think, I think for her, she's always spending on, like, what she considers assets, so like the LV bag, the Rollies. Right, because you can resell yeah, it. Yeah, you can resell them. You make that money, right? And so she thinks of those as investments, property. But when it comes to like something like food, she will never spend on luxury. Like if I get myself a $100 Wagyu steak, she will always question me, why, why are you getting that when you get a $20 Applebee's steak? Yo, why are you going just out? thinking you just like basically yeah, wasted well, 80 well, bucks? Why are you going out to eat? You can just eat at home. Like. Yo, did you ever take your mom out to eat and then she's only criticizing the food, being like, I could make this at home with this and this. Oh, Man, this it cost me $3 time. to make. 10 times we go out to eat, 10 times she's going to say Right. That. So I guess, like, let's just say here is the ultra educated, super frugal way. And here's like your gambling uncle that's like always up big or down way big. And mm. he's always looking over his shoulder for the bookie. Where would you say like, I mean, mo I guess most parents are in the middle, but like, how do they decide where their like lines are? I mean, for my parents, I think they are kind of in the middle because they, they've saved up quite a sum of money. My dad's really good with saving, but his philosophy to us that he's instilled upon his kids is like, what are you making money for? So, mm. you know, make it while you make it and then spend it while you have it. Do you think that that is at all driven by, like, the history and how they got to America and like possibly even like the whole refugee experience. hundred right? percent. My dad always talks about when he came here at 16 years old by himself with like a 5% chance of living. So every day he's talking about like tomorrow we can die. So yeah. why not spend it now? And, and I think when it comes to this whole aspect of we're talking about, like we we've said the word educated and not formally educated. And I'm not trying to say like, uh, the just because you have your parents have degrees or went to college that they don't spend money but there is a pattern that we've seen through many parents talking to all my friends that Dude, like, if you look at the macro yeah. statistics it backs it up as well yeah yeah where if your parents like are college educated and and they went through life that way oftentimes they're probably more frugal when it comes to material things and maybe we'll save up and spend all the money and splurge on education or the things that they truly value while maybe you're more like merchant or business family, they're going to be always on the hustle. And that's kind of like their lifestyle is to maybe just buy a few nice things to keep them fueled, keep their hustle Man, fueled. You know what I mean? I think mean? it really depends on what you enjoy. Cause you were saying you're two Chinese friends, right? Yeah. One, they run like buffets and restaurants, yeah, right? Yeah. And they have fast money and yeah. they don't even really care about going to school. Right? No, no, not at all. And then you said your I mean, other friend dropped out of high school is really educated and he has a good salary, yeah. but he's not living the fast life either. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, not at all. So I guess, would you say that they would hate to switch places with each other like they wouldn't oh, I like think so. they would not I enjoy so. each other's lives no right? i think so but they're both great people at the end of the day you know what i'm saying but no i don't think they would want to switch each other's lives but which, at all. which one are you would For you me? rather go to vegas with 
I'd rather go Vegas with my boy that likes to go to the strip club. You know which one that is, right? <laughs> uh, that's Dave, the Dave, fast money guy. Yeah, the yeah. buffet Cause guy. Because you got the, that, you know how fast the money goes. Is he Fujinese? Because that is a Fujinese stereotype. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's mainland. But, but Fu- that Fujian is the main Yeah, it's probably Fujian. I should probably ask him. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just talking about, co- I got to bring the culture into it. Yeah. Because Kanto people are notorious for being um, defensive with money. Like mm-hmm. whatever they make, they're very much like either just going to save it and just s- stop there or put it into very, very low risk investments. Mm-hmm. I would say the way uh, Cantonese people talk about Fujinese or Vietnamese people is that they like to double down. Yeah. They're both Cantonese. I just remembered. Okay. They, well, they like they like to double down. And yeah. would you would you agree that that is like? Yeah, I would I would say I'm not saying a hundred out of hundred. I'm just talking about stereotypes. Because doubling down means investing, at least in my family's perspective. So high I risk, think, high yeah, reward. High right? risk, high reward. Yeah. Well, like, where have you seen it go good, and where have you seen it go bad? You know, when you risk too much that you can't afford to risk. Like, if you invest too much, like if you buy a Lambo, like if I were to buy a Lambo right now, I I maybe could do that, but my lifestyle might die right away and I might not be able to afford that lease or right. the, that the, might just the note, not be a good financial note. decision. No, if you can afford something like 10 times over, then you can probably afford it. That's always the model for me. Yeah. I think there's cultural aspects too. you know, what's your family do. Andrew, ultimately you have a really interesting point about this where you're saying that whether you're like a flashy person that likes to spend your money or you're like a person who likes to save it, it seems like the person who likes to save it Obviously, they're not necessarily deriving the same amount of dopamine from deploying the capital, right? I will tell you this. For my mm-hmm. friends who make like to make money and spend money, they really know what their dopamine triggers are. They know what makes them tick. They know what gets them up in the morning. They know what lights up their eyes. They know what brings them joy. Whether it's food or watches or cars or clothes, they know. Like, the people who spend money, they know what they're spending money on. They're like, yeah, well, I like to get bottles at the club. I'm going to spend 3 k because... I like that, and that brings me a lot of joy. Right. Now, right. Whereas you were saying you're educated from when you get him to spend a bo- at a bottle at the club, he's cringing the whole time, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what I'm saying is, like, I think, for especially for the people who are not used to spending a lot of money and splurging on things, uh, oftentimes they don't fully understand what brings them joy. And I think it's very important that you figure this out. So whatever money you spend, you want to deploy it efficiently and effectively. Maybe you don't even have a fun group of friends. Maybe you don't have, maybe your friend group is not fun to go to the club. So you shouldn't spend money on a bottle for your friends because it's, it's not going to be worth it's it. It's not even going to be fun. Right? And and some right. guys, they but don't. But if you have the A tier hangover <laughs> yeah. one, two, three, and four squad where you guys are just going to have crazy core memories, whether good or bad, then it might be worth it to, yeah. to spend on Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah. And and again, also, if you have trustworthy friends that are really deep into real estate or something, then that's something that you could look into. But maybe you don't have friends like that. You know what I mean? I, so, yeah, I think a highly overlooked aspect when people talk about, should I be like this Japanese lady and spend a dollar fifty on udon? Or should I be like the crazy uncle who's like always betting on parlays on this site or this gambling website? Is like, what are the circles around you doing, I was, right? I was about to bring that up too, like, who are you meeting and what type of people are you meeting? Like, if you have that Lambo, you have that Rolex on you, you're most likely going to be surrounded by people that might actually have that as well. Because they're going to value it, right? Because if you yeah. hang out with people who don't even care about the Lambo or the Rolex or the AP, whatever, they're protect, not talk to you. Why, why would you? Oh, yeah. not, like, not to mention, like, obviously, when you buy some of those luxury goods, you can join those clubs. clubs like, yeah. literally the meetups, like the Porsche meetup, the Lambo meetup. You know, whether or not you're scraping by and you're just barely making that Porsche payment, you can still kind of be in that car club where you meet other people. And that can lead to something. It doesn't always. But that's why a lot of people do buy certain things, right? Because the attention that it attracts... Well, and some of it is bad attention, right? Because right. you become a target, right? And so you got to watch yourself a little bit more. And that's why a lot of people who are frugal and humble, they're like, yeah, see, I just don't want to wear anything nice. <laughs> right, right, so right. I'm going to be safe. I, I like, can walk around hey. Sunset Boulevard and I'm never worried about getting stuck up. Hey, actually, I'm, I'm pr- wearing all birds and yep. all birds people don't get <laughs> Sometimes robbed. those people with all birds got big bread and assets, no. but they just look. La- last year, I lost a Rolex. Wow. I lost a Rolex. Wait, you got, because- it got. Uh, taken or taken off of me. I was going out and being, you know, flashy and everything. And then I got roofied at the bars. I missed a purple. Woke up, Rolex gone, wallet gone, phone gone. So, like, it's high risk, high reward if you take that route, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. I guess some people, despite all the things that just happened to you, they gotta, you gotta live that way, right? Because that's how you're wired, right? Mm. To Andrew's point, the you make a lot of money and you spend a lot of money, and that's what feels you, right? Do you want to live it's like, like a, the You know how the, the hybrid like, engines, you know how like the uh, the gas combustion fuels the hybrid and like it's all yeah, synchronized? the recycle. 
Yeah, I mean, for me too. Like, I, I think about that little baby lyric where he like he lost a Ferrari in Las Vegas, Nevada. Woke up and went harder and got it again. I, I mean, I went and got another Rolex within a couple months. So Man, like, it influenced me to lie. work harder. All my Viet friends. Think like that. <laughs> not, not a hundred out of a hundred, but a lot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it, it comes down to like just knowing whether, I don't know. I guess it, it has to do with like your sense of like, is tomorrow going to come or not, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I guess, you know what, everybody watching, uh, hopefully this discussion was helpful so far, but let us know in the conversation where you fall on the spectrum. Because like we said, like you can be everything from this Japanese lady who, you know, is probably a cat lady and is probably single. And I would I think, say- that But now owns property. And, and I would houses. say you would think that Japanese- are not really like that nouveau rich, new money yeah. way. They like mm -hmm. they have a lot of Shinto Buddhism. Uh, Chinese and Vietnamese, they have Mahay Mahayana Buddhism, which is more wealth-centric and more fortune, gold-centric. Mm -hmm. Shinto is different from Tibetan, which is different from Theravada, like different even religious value systems, different types of Buddhism, to be honest. Yeah. I think even can impact your desire for fortune or yeah. not. Yeah, do you got the gold chain Buddhism? Or, or you got the more, the I guess, jade, the Shinto the Buddhism. Yo, Shinto, the Buddha is skinny in yeah. Shinto. Yeah, the, yeah. The, obviously the Chinese Buddha is very, like, luxurious. Uh, uh, yeah, so, I mean, let us know what type of family you guys come from. I mean, I think it's good to discuss and think about as you get older. And when you start thinking about money and making money, you have to know. Um, so, yeah. I will say this. I, my overall takeaway is just, like, especially if you come from a family that's very defensive with money, I think you can analyze and, and get around people who are more offensive and work to make more money. And then you might feel more comfortable with spending more, right? Because you got to play offense and defense. It's just, I always compare it to like tennis or ping pong. Mm -hmm. Like the best players, of course, some people are better at offense. Some people are, people are better at defense, which is like making money or spending money, deploying capital. And other people are better at just like saving or being like smart or frugal or thrifty. But it's like, you need both. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that episode of the Hot Pop Boys. Uh, again, let us know in the comments down below what you thought about our advice, our perspective, and also uh, what type of spender are you? Or are you a saver? Or are you a mix? And what do you spend money on? Because certain things people value more than others. So, all right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Shout out to Eric for joining us. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.